Well, I'm Bill Goff. My training has been in electrical engineering at Princeton University. That's where I got my two degrees. As a graduate student, I was working in the fusion program, which was just beginning, and it was classified at that time. I've since gotten a professional engineer's license in uh, nuclear engineering and have been working at a number of different locations, but the last two were the Electric Power Research Institute, that's why I came to California. And I worked on the, I was a manager for the fusion program there. This is the utilities research arm. Uh, then at the uh, high energy physics laboratory, the synchrotron radiation laboratory at Stanford, at Stanford Linear Accelerator. And my original work on the fusion torch was when I was working at the Atomic Energy Commission in Washington, D.C. I'm George Miley. I'm a professor of nuclear plasma and radiological engineering, plasma being the key word, uh, at the University of Illinois. Also, I started a small high-tech company, NPL Associates. I guess I became interested in energy and the environment, too, back when I was a kid growing up in western Pennsylvania. My dad worked in an oil refinery and there were strip mines all around us. And the industrial steel mills around Pittsburgh, uh, uh, we had pollution. I had to keep my window closed to keep soot ash from coming in or my mother would get after me. When I became a student, I wanted to work on new energy. And I didn't particularly at that time care what form, anything that would work I was interested in. But as time went on, I began to realize that fusion is one of the fundamental new sources of energy for the long term. And so I've been working on various aspects of fusion technology and related subjects ever since. Okay. We are operating a system, economic system, that is an open-ended system. So we take material out of the ground, make things, pass them through, count how fast we're using them, end up depositing them into the earth. Or if it's a power plant or elsewhere, we deposit them to, into the other sink, which is, is the atmosphere, or into the water. We've been so greedy as a society worldwide because we've we're consuming all the oil that has been created centuries, thousands and thousands of years ago. And uh, we're using it up in just a few brief years. And that's not the only thing. We are also using up all of our other natural resources, minerals, you know, copper, metals, platinum. All these things we're using up in our society, as Bill says, they are not being recycled. They are used once, and essentially you can't recycle them with present technology. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to address a way to close that cycle. Is you need to have a clean energy source. And there are a number of options right now. Of course, you could take solar energy can take geothermal energy from the earth, you can take the wind energy, or you can do the same process we're doing in the sun and use fusion energy. The nuclear fission is a possibility if we can learn how to t handle the wastes and the safety aspects of uh, terrorism. Most of the materials that we have been producing, all the materials we've been producing, break and become molecular structures. There are only 92 basic elements in nature. If we could return to those 92 elements, then you could restructure anything you need. We can do that, and I think it's the only way we can do that, is to use an ultra-high temperature plasma to break the material back to its basic elements. Your goal is to find a way to bring us back somehow to a closed material cycle. Bring us back yeah. to be in alignment with nature. 